Even though Donald Trump lost this election, I think it's pretty obvious that had he not bungled this pandemic, he probably would have won. Now there's no way to prove this. This is basically just speculation that's really difficult to quantify. But nonetheless, when you see that Democrats underperformed the polls and Trump somehow grew his vote share, I mean, it's a really bad sign for Democrats. And so basically, regardless if you agree with that analysis or not, I think that it's clear Democrats have to make some substantial changes if they want to prevent a full GOP takeover of our government in 2024, actually improve people's lives, change leadership, take action to prove to people that you're fighting for them. Otherwise, you might not win. I mean, the pandemic really was the key factor here in this election. But we're already off to a pretty bad start because Democrats predictably are proving that they haven't learned a single thing because after losing seats in the House of Representatives, the same members of House leadership will remain in House leadership. Steny Hoyer, Jim Clyburn, and of course, Nancy Pelosi. She will remain House Speaker once again, but don't worry because we're supposed to be relieved that this is probably going to be her last term. I'm not necessarily uh, banking on that, but still, when you lose an election or you do worse than an election under your leadership, the thing to do, if you care about the party, is to resign. But the only individual in Democratic Party leadership that actually resigned is Sherry Bustos, who was the chairwoman of the DCCC. But we all know that that's probably because she's going to get a job in Biden's administration. So after they performed worse than everyone was expecting, than the polls indicated, we see zero change in leadership. That's insane. It tells me that this party is not serious about winning. Uh, but let's hear from House Democrats uh, because they spoke after they were uh, victorious in remaining in leadership. And uh, everything they said was completely uh, wrong and uh, idiotic. Nancy Pelosi, a voice for the voiceless, a defender of the disenfranchised, a legendary legislator, a notorious negotiator, <laughs> and a powerful, profound, prophetic, principled public servant, Speaker Nancy Pelosi. Like it is. Yeah, like it is. <laughs> well, uh, thank you so much, Mr. Chairman, for your kind words. I always accept any compliments on behalf of the House Democratic Caucus because they enable any of what we do to be possible by their courage, their integrity, and their just... Uh, beautiful vision for a better America. I am pleased to look to the 117th Congress, but I'm focused on the 116th Congress. We need to get work done for the American people they need right now. We must, in this Congress, respond to the dreams and aspirations of the children and their families. And I am hopeful that we can work together within our caucus and reaching out across the aisle to get done what needs to be done. So in other words, there's not going to be a strategy change because there is not going to be a change in leadership. And it's just, it almost made my head explode when Jeffrey said that Nancy Pelosi is a voice for the voiceless. Someone who has millions and millions of dollars and two $12,000 refrigerators who looks the other way when more than 50,000 Americans die every single year because they don't have health care, that's not necessarily someone who I'd describe as a voice for the voiceless. So in two years, if Democrats lose even more ground in the House and lose the House altogether, I wouldn't be surprised if um, we see no leadership changes again. Because Democrats in the House have proven that they care more about self-aggrandizement and their own personal power ambitions than they care about the party and delivering for people. But that's only the House. Let's check in on the Senate. Maybe Democrats in the Senate have a little bit better, you know, of a grasp of what they need to do to stop Republicans from taking back power. So who controls the Senate is going to come down to two runoff races in Georgia. Let's check in on one of those races to see what one of the candidates, John Ossoff, stands for. Do you support the Green New Deal? No. Do you support Medicare for All? No. Do you support DC statehood? Yes. Do you support Puerto Rican statehood? Yes. Do you support defunding the police? No. 
Do you support abolishing ICE? No. Do you support expanding the Supreme Court? No. Do you support ending the filibuster? Maybe. So he's going to blow it. Now he is neck and neck with David Perdue, and I hope that he wins, because to have Democrats in control of the Senate, that allows us to exert a lot of pressure on them. I don't want them using, oh, well, Republicans control the Senate as an excuse. I don't want them using Mitch McConnell as an excuse for their failures. If they don't deliver, I want them to be blamed for it. I want them to be accountable. So I want him to win. But when you run a campaign where you stand for nothing, I mean, who's going to come out to vote for you? I hope he pulls it off, but it shouldn't be this close. It shouldn't be neck and neck. You have to stand for something, stand for anything. And after seeing that incumbent Democrats who supported Medicare for All won, even in red and swing districts, you should at least adopt one progressive policy. But John Ossoff is a corporate clown. So if he wins, it'll be by the skin of his teeth. And I hope he pulls it off. Now, um, there's another area of opportunity for Democrats. So Donald Trump just announced that he's withdrawing some troops from Iraq and Afghanistan. Now, Democrats can use this opportunity to attack Donald Trump from the left and say, Mr. President, you should be bringing all of the troops home. So what are they doing? Let's look to uh, Tammy Duckworth, who is a veteran who speaks out about foreign policy issues pretty frequently. What is she saying? How is she holding Donald Trump accountable? All of the military commanders have spoken up and say, this is the wrong thing to do. We want our troops home, but let's not bring them home in, in body bags. And that's potentially what's going to happen if this president gets his way and puts his own political timeline ahead of our national security. We've been there for 20 years, Tammy. How much longer do we have to stay there to ensure that we bring our troops home safely? I mean, the argument that she's using doesn't even make sense. And understand how ridiculous this is. You are to the right of a president on foreign policy who just last week wanted to bomb Iran. When it comes to foreign policy, you should never, ever lose the moral ground to that psychopath. But here we are. You are lambasting him for uh, not staying in Iraq and Afghanistan when you should be criticizing him for not bringing home 100% of the troops. So congressional Democrats are just clueless, but maybe Joe Biden is going to do a little bit better. Maybe there's some things that he's going to do. We've seen pressure from Elizabeth Warren and Chuck Schumer on Joe Biden to cancel $50,000 of student debt for each student via executive action. So when he was asked about this, what did he say? The student loan forgiveness figure in your plan, would you take executive action to achieve it? It does figure in my plan. I've laid out in detail. For example, the, uh, uh, the legislation passed by the Democratic House calls for immediate $10,000 forgiveness of student loans. It's holding people up. They're in real trouble. They're having to make choices between paying their student loan and paying their rent, those kinds of decisions. It should be done immediately. In addition to that, if you know, I think that everything from community college straight through to doubling Pell Grants to making sure that we have access, free education for anyone making under $125,000 for four years of college. And there is a program that exists now under the law that forgives student loans for being able to engage in, engaging in public service. I'm, I'm going to institute that fundamental change in that so it's able to be available to everyone that in fact is engaged. It's not being very well managed right now. So I'm going to do all of those things. So, I mean, I guess I can get behind a means tested version of free college. That's better than nothing. But um, when it comes to canceling just $10,000 of student debt, that is not going to do much. It's not going to uh, have that big of an impact in the grand scheme of things at the macro level. And furthermore, if you truly expect to only make that happen through Congress, well, if Republicans retain control of the Senate, that's not going to happen. So, I mean, why even be hopeful? <laughs> I mean, I was never hopeful that Joe Biden would do this. I was just shocked that Chuck Schumer shed, said he should do this. But I mean, <laughs> Democrats, they just, they can't not disappoint. They are fundamentally incapable of not fucking up. Uh, now, people have told me that, look, even if we will be disappointed in Democrats, and Joe Biden, in particular, at least we can, you know, uh, take comfort knowing that we're going to see Donald Trump in uh, in handcuffs behind bars. And to that, my response always was. <laughs> <laughs> now, why am I so skeptical that Donald Trump will be held accountable for any of his crimes? Well, quote, 
Biden hopes to avoid divisive Trump investigations, preferring unity. <laughs> Shocker. Biden has told aides that he's concerned that investigations would divide the country, but that he would leave decisions up to an independent Justice Department. Look, uh, don't get your hopes up. Trump is probably going to get away scot-free, and uh, he probably will most likely run for president again in 2024, and he's probably going to be the Republican Party's nominee, and I wouldn't be surprised if he beat whoever the Democratic Party nominee was. I mean, he's already leading in 2024 polls. These are early polls, but nonetheless, you know, Republicans still really like him, even though he just lost an election. And uh, Democrats have a really, really short window to act. And if they don't take meaningful action to address the concerns that Americans have, we are going to find ourselves in the exact same situation that we're in currently, where Donald Trump could literally become the president again because Democrats fail to act. And when Democrats fail to act, voters do not come out for them. And when voters don't come out for Democrats, Republicans win. So they have to take action. And the early signs that we're seeing show us that they're, they're not going to do jack fucking shit. They're not going to change a single fucking thing. After their strategy time and again has been proven a failure. When Democrats uh, do not control most state legislatures. After losing more than 1,200 seats in state legislatures across the country under, you know, Obama's watch, they've changed nothing. And they're still possibly not going to change nothing. And if anything, they're going to be worse because they're going to use Biden's victory as evidence that their centrist strategy is uh, uh, more beneficial, more, more uh, electorally viable. Okay, well, once again... Uh, if they don't change, they're going to lose. And after they lose, they will then argue why they shouldn't change anything. And centrism is the way to go. And not actually taking care of people, materially speaking, is uh, the way to go. Let's just do some incremental things. It's like a never-ending cycle that uh, constantly repeats itself. And there's just no hope of escaping the cycle. It's frustrating. Not surprising, albeit still frustrating. Tremendous, 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 tremendous